On this channel, we like to talk about different alien species, what made them tick or ticked off. We've covered a wide variety of well-liked species like the Cathar or the Twi'leks, and today we'll be looking at the Duros. With fan favorite Duros characters like Cad Bane, we hope to shed some lights on this lesser understood species. So grab your blue milk, strap in, and let's dive into the lore behind this fascinating alien species. Attention, Sergeant on deck. We've talked before about how we, as humans, find it easiest to relate to things that look like us. It's why so many things are anthropomorphized, from animal characters to transformers. The same thing is true when it comes to aliens. It's easiest for us to relate and be fond of aliens that are humanoid in some way. Take the Twi'leks, for example. They may have colorful skin and leku, but their overall body shape and friendly faces make them feel much closer to us than they probably should. The opposite is also true, however. When you want to make something feel extra alieny, you give it features that stop us from relating to them. That was the case with the Duros, also known as the Durosians. Duros could be best described as intimidating. They were humanoid in shape, but reptilian rather than mammalian. Their heads were shaped much like a keyhole, bulbous on top and long and narrow at the jaw. Their eyes were also eerie, large, and almost glowing in red, yellow, or gold. It wasn't just their eyes that made their faces stand out. They had no nose, and that, combined with their thin, lipless mouths, their sharp teeth, and hairless scalps, makes us almost think of Voldemort from Harry Potter if Voldemort and a praying mantis had babies. Moving on from their face, the rest of their biology was as alien as it could get while still looking humanoid. Their skin was smooth and came in a variety of desaturated colors, from gray to pale blue or purple. An interesting evolutionary remnant was an oily substance they secreted involuntarily when stressed. This oil smelled and tasted terribly and had once kept the Duros safe back when they frequently fell prey to larger predators. And if that wasn't strange enough for you, their blood was also green, like spider blood. Remember how we mentioned they were reptilian? Much like our own galaxy's lizard people, Duros laid eggs. When they hatched, their young first went through a larval stage before gradually maturing into their adult forms. If their appearance feels familiar, but you just can't place it, we're here to solve that mystery for you. The Duros were distantly related to our beloved Nemoidians. The two species differentiated long enough ago to be distinct, but still maintained a faint resemblance. Unsurprisingly, the Duros took being called Nemoidian as a grave insult, but honestly, we can't blame them. Now, despite their intimidating appearance and the fearsome reputations of Duros like Cad Bane, most Duros weren't cold-blooded killers. In truth, they were explorers, and quite brilliant ones at that. As a species, Duros were incredibly passionate about traveling. They were adventurous explorers and well known for their astro-navigational skills. To give you an idea of how much space exploration meant to them, we only need to look at their preferred appellation, Traveler. This was a polite way to refer to any Duros regardless of their profession. Recounting stories of their travels and discoveries was one of the few ways one could get a Duro to open up, as they were usually quiet and reserved people. Their language, Duris, was commonly spoken among other travelers and served as a common language in the galaxy alongside Basic. Their drive to conquer the unknown spaces between the stars pushed them to being one of the first species to develop hyperdrive-capable spacecraft, if not the first according to some sources. They were so successful that many of the hyperspace routes they charted remained in use well into the Imperial era due to their efficiency. Thanks to their spacefaring technology and navigational skills, they colonized and established themselves on many other planets in the galaxy. We like to think their homeworld situation motivated their thirst for exploration, at least in part. Their home planet, 
Duro, was actually mostly uninhabited due to uncontrolled pollution. Instead, the Duros lived in orbit around it in 20 orbital space cities and used the planet itself to cultivate food. As you'd expect from a species obsessed with space travel, the Duros established a starship construction industry successful enough to rival even Corellia. Their government was even set up around it. The stockholders of the Starship Construction Corporation Consortium had the final say in big decisions that might affect the industry's profits. By default, that meant that all Aduros had to do to be involved in politics was buy some stocks. Another aspect of Duro's life affected by this corporate mentality was money lending. The Duro's lending tradition, as it was called, was a sum of local customs that Duro's had to obey when one Duro's lent money to another in order to buy something, like a home or a spaceship. The debt could be repaid all at once with 10% interest or in predetermined installments. According to tradition, Whatever was decided on in the first agreement was final. No later agreement could change the way the debt would be repaid, even if both parties agreed to it. The debt was also attached to the goods as a lien. In this sense, the debt burdened the title of the purchased item and followed it wherever it went, whether that was to a new owner or the loan recipient's inheritance. No matter what, the lending party couldn't requisition the goods unless there was no hope of the debt ever being repaid. These rules were incredibly rigid, and it makes sense. In a corporate society where stocks controlled the government, borrowing money and being unable to pay your debts was considered pretty detrimental to society. That's why any breach in the Duro's lending traditions resulted in severe social stigma for the person who failed to follow the rules. In conclusion, the Duro's were just as scary as their distant cousins when it came to money. But you didn't hear us saying that. We've already mentioned that the Duros were one of, if not the first species to develop hyperspace travel. Around 100,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, their homeworld Duro was conquered by the Rakata and became part of their infinite empire. Duros were even involved in the creation of the Starforge, that infamous weapon Darth Revan later relied on. Although the Rakata were cruel to all of their subjects, the Duros used the opportunity to learn from their technology. Later, once the Rakata died off from a plague, they overthrew their evil overlords, established a monarchy, and used their knowledge of the Rakata tech to develop the first hyperdrives. With their newfound freedom, the Duros spread across the galaxy, meeting and forming alliances with other races. Together with the Corellians, who had developed hyperdrive technology independently, they built the first arm of the Corellian trade spine. This was Duro's golden age. Around 25,000 BBY, the Duros were actually one of the founding races that formed the Galactic Republic during the Unification Wars. The monarchy was replaced by the ruling corporations we discussed earlier, and history was made. In 3,962 BBY, their homeworld was almost completely destroyed during the Mandalorian Wars. The Mandalorians, who were rampaging through the colonies and core regions, used basilisk war droids to destroy the surface. It wasn't the only time they suffered due to war. The old Sith Wars were also unkind to them, as were the new Sith Wars. During the Clone Wars, the CIS launched Operation Dirge's Lance in 20 BBY. This heavily coordinated campaign led to Duro being taken. The end of the Clone Wars didn't see much improvement for the planet. The Empire drove many Duros away, stripping what was left of their homeworld's resources and sparking conflict with Corellia to keep both planets distracted. Many Duros joined the Alliance to restore the Republic in an attempt to free their homeworld, and the rest is history. Did you know that in one obscure source called Mission from Mount Yoda, female Duros were depicted with long ponytails despite every other source clearly stating they were all bald? Still, we like the mental image of Cad Bane rocking a mullet. Feel free to let us know which hairstyle you'd like to see our favorite bounty hunter sporting in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.